And what do they want? Well, they want to literally erase Canada's borders. And they want to then triple Canada's population to dump so many migrants into Canada that our population would hit 100 million. They're serious. The tweet says, Century Initiative has released a detailed plan for ensuring uh, secure and prosperous standard of, of living for Canada's future generation, centered on boosting the population to 100 million by 2100. Learn more about our recommendations at their website, Big Bold Can. Okay, here, watch. Two minutes long, I'll come back on the other side. Canada today, 37 million people. Fast forward, what is our future? How will Canada and Canadians build on their strengths and ensure a prosperous tomorrow? Our voices and choices now will determine our future over the next century because people are at the heart and start of change. Our long-term shared success depends on our ability to grow. Our ambitions, imagination, and action to go beyond what is expected. Century Initiative, a rising chorus of voices from across Canada, envisions 100 million Canadians by 2100. Why? Because scale matters. And in 81 years, it will matter even more. Let's look at two paths to Canada's future. First, business as usual. In 2100, the world population climbs to 11 billion, while Canada's rises to only 49 million. With static immigration levels and a low birth rate, Canada's rank drops to the 48th largest country from 38th now. GDP growth, a measure of our collective prosperity, falls to half the average 3% growth of the past 50 years. Today, Canada has four working people for every retiree. In 2035, it slides to two. We stall, or worse, decline. The second route leads to a bolder future, one that includes better early childhood supports for those who want bigger families and increased immigration to draw in the talent we will need. The outcome, our economy, keeps pace with the current growth levels. A bigger Canada will go beyond what is expected if we plan thoughtfully and proactively. We will create better job and investment opportunities, including at our universities and colleges critical centers for lifelong learning and developing our future leaders. Our country's potential, its people, places, and progress will soar farther and faster if we start now. What's next on this journey to a bigger, bolder Canada? Take the first step with us. First thing I noticed in that video was how they showed so many big open spaces with no people in it. They showed a field, they showed a forest, and even when they showed cities, it was very uncrowded. These are the people who want to triple our population, so they want to hide the fact of how crowded it would be. They showed something, I'm not even sure if this is a stock image from Canada, but it looked like something in our far north. They showed the Confederation Bridge to Prince Edward Island, I think that's what that is. Yeah, that's not where new immigrants to Canada live. They move to Toronto, Greater Toronto, Vancouver, and to a degree, Montreal. They don't go to the far north. They don't go to Prince Edward Island. Have you ever driven in Toronto traffic or Vancouver traffic? Have you ever tried to buy a house or even rent a condo in Toronto or Vancouver? Now imagine dumping 65 million more people into Canada and affording those things. Look, it wouldn't work, it couldn't work. It would turn every town into a Toronto and Vancouver-sized mess. And it would turn Toronto, it would be as crowded as Karachi. Vancouver would be as crowded as Beijing. Why would you do that to yourself? Canada's north is not inhabitable in any scale. It's true, technically, that Canada is the second largest country in the world by geography, but 90% of our people live within an hour of our southern border, our north is barren because it's cold. Permafrost covers most of it. You know what permafrost means? The ground is frozen, solid, like a rock, year round. So you can't dig roots. Trees can't put down roots. Even in the height of summer, it only thaws about 18 inches down. I've been up to Tuktoyuk, Doug. I've been to Inuvik. In those towns, everything's built on stilts. 
Even the plumbing, the sewer, the water, it's above ground utility pipes because you can't dig into the frozen ground. Everybody up in the north needs, I don't know, about 100 grand a year in subsidies from the rest of us just to fly the Canadian flag up there so the Russians and the Danes don't just take the land. That's fine. But you can't put millions of people up there. Nothing grows up there. All the food has to be imported unless you're going to hunt whales or something. What are they thinking, 100 million? Where are you going to put 100 million people? Who are these crazy people calling for? I noticed that everyone in the video looked very modern and very first world. The pitch was that we'd be bringing in people of the highest education because we need that in Canada. But that's not who's coming to our country now, and that's certainly not who would come here if we tried to jam in nearly a million extra people every year. Right now, fewer than half of Canada's migrants have any sort of skill of economic value. Most are either family members like grandparents who have no language skills, no job skills, but they're ready to take pensions and free health care for the rest of their life. And that's just the economic side of it. What about cultural fit? Monia Mizig, one of the advisors to this lobby group, she wears the Muslim hijab. But they're smarter than to put women in hijabs or niqabs in their promotional videos. They only have uncovered women in the video and a modern looking Muslim man. And most of the stock images are of European origin kids. But that's not the plan for 100 million people. There are not 100 million people from other first world English or French speaking countries who want to come here. But there are plenty of people from Pakistan, Iran, Syria, Bangladesh, other un Canadian dictatorships who would love to come here. Look, they wouldn't be coming here to be our doctors and scientists. So, what are the opposite? Dumping a million new migrants a year in Canada, well, it certainly would have an economic impact. And yes, technically speaking, it would increase our GDP. But that's very different than increasing our standard of living or quality of life, isn't it? That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.